Good morning. Good morning. Uh, welcome to worship on the 15th Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, this is uh, the, the holiday weekend, uh, and we're glad that you're here. Uh, so it's it's a, a kind of the kind of the last uh, breath before we jump into things. Uh, starting this Wednesday, I think the choir starts to meet and starts singing. And uh, and uh, uh, two weeks, not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday, we're going to start with uh, with with our youth youth stuff and uh, grow and confirmation and all that starts in a couple weeks here too. So <clears throat> we're getting launched. And next week, um, if you have children, we would invite them to bring their backpacks so we can launch them into the school year uh, with a, 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 a certain special blessing uh, from the church. Um, the, the other thing that's uh, a big uh, time of celebration is uh, Jim and Ellen Geyer are celebrating, have, have celebrated, and are still celebrating their 50th anniversary. So, that, 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 that makes your time a golden time, right? So, uh, could we sing happy anniversary to you? And, and it's also a birthday, too, isn't it? Exactly. Xavier's birthday? Which one's Xavier? Where is it? Where is it? There he is. <laughs> happy birthday, Xavier. Can we sing happy birthday and happy anniversary to Jim and Ellen Geyer? Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, dear Jim Ellen. Happy anniversary to you. And in celebration of that, they brought cake for us to for us to indulge in, and there's a lot. They're 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 very good looking cake, uh, so so please stay with us after fellowship and in, and help them celebrate and eat their cake. So uh, that's all the announcements I have. Is there any announcements from the congregation? If not, uh, let us prepare our hearts for worship. We continue our service in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, full of compassion and mercy, abounding in steadfast love. Amen. Trusting God's promise of forgiveness, let us confess our sin against God and of one another. Eternal God, our Creator. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
God's love has poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit to us. In the mercy of Almighty God, Christ died for us. We were still sinners. And for his sake, God forgives you all your sins. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. great victory Jesus blood has set us free let all his creatures join our song for the Lord's to throne belongs singing alleluia praises to the Lord alleluia alleluia this is the feast of victory of the glorious lamb above now all God's people gather round for the banquet of God's love. Singing Alleluia, praises to the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Oh, is 
it not a mystery that our Lord a lamb should be, who on the cruel cross was slain, but a rose in heaven to reign? Sing it, Alleluia, praises to the Lord, Alleluia, Alleluia. All honor, blessing, glory, might sing the host to Christ on high. All power, riches, wisdom, strength, now let all on earth reply. Sing it, Alleluia, praises to the Lord, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray the prayer of the day. O oh God, our strength. We have you in our need and your liberty. Protect us from all dangers that attack us from the outside. Lead us to
rejoice and be glad. Yours is the kingdom. Shine for all to see. Rejoice and be glad. Blessed are you. Blessed, holy are you. Rejoice and be glad. Yours is the king. Thank you. You made a great day better. I'll give you a little history lesson quick. <laughs> Fifty some years ago, I was walking down the street and I saw the young lady with the biggest brown eyes you've ever seen. Giggled and giggled and giggled. Ironically, she's here today. <laughs> a reading from the book of Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. So now, Israel, give heed to the statutes and ordinances that I am teaching you to observe, so that you may live to enter and occupy the land of the Lord, the God of your ancestors is giving you. You must neither add anything to what I command you or take away anything from it, but keep the commandments of the Lord for your God for which I am charging you. You must observe them diligently, for this will show you, show your wisdom and discernment to the peoples, who, when they hear all these statutes, will say, Surely this great nation is a wise and discerning people. For what other nation has a God so near to it as the Lord our God is whenever we call to him? And what other, what other great nation has statutes and ordinances as just as this entire law that I am setting before you today? But take care and watch yourselves closely, so as neither to forget the things that your eyes have seen, nor let them slip from your mind all the days of your life. Make them known to your children and your children's children. The word of the Lord. This reading is from the book of James, the first chapter. Every generous act of giving with every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. In fulfillment of his own purpose, he gave us birth by the word of truth, so that we would become a kind of first fruits of his creatures. You must understand this, my beloved. Let everyone be quick to listen, slow to speak and slow to anger, for your anger does not produce God's righteousness. Therefore, rid yourselves of all sordidness and rank growth of wickedness, and welcome with meekness the implanted word that has the power to save your souls. But be doers of the word and not merely hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in the mirror for they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they look like. 
But those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, not being hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in their doing. If any think they are religious and do not bridle their tongues, but deceive their hearts, their religion is worthless. Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to care for orphans and widows in their distress and to keep ones unsustained by the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. gospel comes to us from St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Now when the Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered around him, they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with defiled hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and all the Jews did not eat unless they thoroughly washed their hands, thus observing the tradition of the elders. And they did not eat anything from the marketplace unless they washed it. And there there are also many other traditions that they observed. The washing of cups, pots, and bronze kettles. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not live according to the tradition of the elders, but eat with defiled hands? He said to them, Isaiah prophesied rightly about you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrines. You abandoned the commandments of God and hold to human tradition. And he called the crowd again, and he said to them, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that that is going can defile, but the things that come out are what defile. For it is from within, from the human heart, the evil intentions come. Fornication, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wickedness, deceit, licentiousness, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. The Gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. I, uh, I want to pay attention to verse 7 and 8, uh, mostly. Uh, Jesus is quoting uh, from the prophet Isaiah, and, it, and he quotes uh, Isaiah, In vain do they worship me, teaching human precepts as doctrine. You abandon the commandments of God and hold to human tradition. Now, as one who loves tradition and finds it sometimes, and a lot of times, um, helpful in establishing a rich identity that goes a long way of grounding us as people and as a community, uh, 
I have to admit, I, I find this challenging. But I think in a good way. I, I, I think challenging tradition from time to time can help us refine what we really believe. And I have to admit, I have been thinking about this a lot lately, and just as I've been engaged with, with different traditions of this congregation, and uh, so this is pretty fresh on my, my mind uh, for, for some time now. Uh, what people think it is, what they, people think tradition is, and what they think it's not. Uh, so let's go back to the text. I, I, I find this is, a, this is an interesting uh, gospel lesson. Uh, Jesus picks uh, washing the hands uh, as, as, as kind of the thing to pick on, so, which is a good tradition in my book. You know, doctors tell us to wash your hands, uh, don't they? Uh, we reduce chances of getting sick when you wash your hands. Um, as the hands are the place, especially in the time of Jesus, where all kinds of things and germs can culminate and gather. And so it's, it's, a, it's, it's a good habit to get into. Really, the point of the, the, the text that I see here is linking human traditions to religious purity. Uh, and, and just as big of an issue here is the inconsistencies uh, of, of the of the Pharisees. So the question that we always deal with is, what traditions are helpful and which ones are not helpful? And what's the meaning and purpose behind these traditions? So that, I think these are healthy questions to ask of our traditions. But one of the gifts that we have as, as a church is that we have four generations of people under the same roof. Uh, we have the span of history and the perceptions of tra different, varying perceptions of traditions. Um, there is the age-old concern from generations. Uh, one's concerned very much so with preserving the, tra the traditions, and the others are willing to try something new. And some who realize that change is inevitable, like myself, but mourns the loss. And I find it fascinating to watch this tension being played out with folks in communities and churches, uh, with traditions and processes around traditions are, are, are important. Uh, which ones are important, which ones are not, and how, how, how do they define us? And I find myself constantly in this debate with every single congregation that I have served. Uh, I, I, but I, I hope people can see this is a real gift to have these multi-generations and this, have this multi-generation experience. But I would hope that the, the, these intentions um, would stir up more of a self-defining questions and how, how, and that would give us some directions to shape our discussion. So for example, I, I have to wonder, uh, what would it look like uh, just to challenge us old people? What would, it, what would it look like if us old people ask, what can I learn from these young people about myself? And what can I learn about them in the world? And what would happen if uh, I, a young person, think about these old people? What, what, what is it about this, these old people taking an interest in me? And how would I respond to that? Uh, what if the motive in this interaction, this multi-generational interaction, is, was not trying to fix the other person, but live with the integrity of what I believe about my life and my faith. How do I live in the tension of open-mindedness to something that might be new and living what I believe? By the nurture of that relationship ask, what kind of questions can I ask the other person to help them grow as people, as people of God and their faith? One of the most interesting times in American history was the era in the 1930s. Uh, this time was remarkable because it, there was so much change going on, some major changes in American society taking place that would affect one's way of life and thought. Um, one of the major events was the Wall Street market crash of 1929, which impulsed the Great Depression, the worst economic downturn in history of the United States. 
the depression had de devastating effects on the country. The stock market was in shambles. Many banks couldn't continue to operate. Farmers fell into bankruptcy. And about 13 million American people were unemployed in 1933. Another major event that was taking place around that time, globally, uh, in the 1930s, the rise of communism and Hitler was made Chancellor of Germany in World War II. An incredible, mind-boggling, unexpected six million Jews were put to their death. The rise of postmodernism, uh, social changes of the early 20th century fueled the flames for protests and reactions to many new ideas. Uh, one, of, one of them that uh, it was quite prevalent in, in, in around that time was Charles Darwin's The Origin of the Species that challenged many Christians' perceptions of creation. Well, in response to the fast, dramatic, changing world came a resistance, a new kind of Christian fundamentalism. This fundamentalism builds on this argument off of a literal view of the Bible and often reacts with black and white, right and wrong answers. And there's not much patience for the gray, where there is a strong sense of if and then formula. For example, if we repent, then God will bless us. If we sin, then God will punish us in some way. Bad things happen are either God telling us to repent or punishing us of our sins. But as we look at our history and read our books and hear our stories, we cannot begin to even fathom what really what it was like living in Jesus' day and what, what it meant for the people at that time. I think history has shown has shown that problems just don't go away. And the resolution to one problem is the beginning of another. And I guess what I have to come to believe about the human condition is that we are all broken and are part of a fallen humanity, and we all need God. And, I re and as I reflect about the, the 1930s, uh, the, the only connection I really have with this time was stories, uh, either through books or stories from my grandmother, which was a very proud, staunch Danish Lutheran who was living during these times. Those stories became a part of me and part of my memory. And those became part of her traditions. And, and I remember my grandmother uh, and my parents, I guess, too, mind you. Uh, they would constantly boast about the good old days. Uh, where soda pop was a nickel and school was uphill both ways. Religion was the way it was supposed to be. Uh, once she was uh, describing to me, uh, worshiping out of this old, old black hymnal, my grandmother loved this black hymnal from the Danish church. And the, the phrase, those good old days, would roll from her lips as she would share me with me her bliss from growing up. The hardships that she endured were talked about in a prideful fashion, and there was much wisdom and joy living through them and with them. And when I look to the future now, I, and I see the generations below me, my, my children's generation, and I find myself visiting those high times of my youth, which uh, sometimes, it actually I have, to, I have to admit, as my kids will contest, oftentimes I catch myself saying, those are the good old days, you know. What once was an annoying statement is now something that has taken new meaning for me. And if uh, I were to honest, and if any of us were really truly honest about our, our sense of history, and, and we struggled just like they did. We used to have the same types of struggles as these young kids do today. But to today, that we were living in, in a time of challenge where everything is very real. Change the technology is happening at an accelerated weight. We have social media, and there seems to be more and more worries and concerns and anxiety about the church and what that means for the church and its future, what it means for the, what we're concerned about the economy. Communities are, are becoming more and more diverse, and, and in, in, our, in the sense of our community, we're shrinking. New things are popping up everywhere, and we have to deal with a host of views. At the click of a button, you go on YouTube and you can hear all kinds of different beliefs out there and, and thoughts out there. Information is at our fingertips. 
Our assumptions about the world are being challenged. What we make of this world and how we respond to it and how we articulate faith and where do we go from here. Uh, one can only wonder what issues or even devotional life would look like 70 years from now. Will there be a pastor here at Zion Lutheran Church standing in its pulpit preaching about 2018? Now what would that look like to them? Will they laugh and think that and deem these problems are but silly issues? Would they think our arguments and perceptions of the world were impractical? Now, living in the present problems can easily captivate us to the point where we wallow in, our, in, in those things that are just not that important. And we find ourselves in the same position as the Pharisees in our gospel lesson today, don't we? Putting human rituals, human awareness, human deed problems in front of God. Here, Jesus once again pushes our boundaries. He challenges us, and he calls us, he calls into human question the human nature. And when we find uh, our relationship with God and our history and our traditions, and we find it hard to understand this world, I'm reminded of a quote uh, from one of my famous, I was a philosophy major in college, but one of my favorite philosophers, and he was a theologian, uh, Soren Kierkegaard, uh, he said, life can only be understood backwards, but it must be lived forwards. The God who claims us in the waters of baptism, who suffers with us in our own afflictions and loves us unconditionally, who died for us so sin and death does not have the last word on us, and even calls us into service. In, in, in spite and in, in, in because and through our imperfections and our own brokenness. And, and, and I, to me, we can find hope in that. And we can find hope in the bantering of the past and, and the worrying about the present and future. And yes, we can find hope in a God who has his hand in history and tradition that for some reason, in some way, we will see this through, see through the hard times. This is the God of Abraham. And that God will never lead us. This is a God who will be with us even through death. Amen. Thousand ages in your
continue our service in the confession of our faith found in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived in the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. Third day he rose again, he had sent into heaven. He'll sit at the right hand of the Father, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the of the saints, the of the sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the Amen. Freed by God in Christ to live and love and serve, we pray for the church those in need, and all of God's beloved creation. Gracious God, we pray for all those who labor to bear your word into the world by welcoming the stranger, healing the sick, and caring for the orphan. Be with the church as we take up the cross against the the powers of oppression. Lord, in your mercy. Creator of God, we pray for the earth. Keep watch over these, those who are, are endangered. Make us good stewards of your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Sovereign God, we pray for the nations, the world, for governments, leaders, and citizens. Watch over refugees and immigrants. Inspire us to welcome them with glad hearts. When they arrive to our shores and our neighborhoods. Lord, in your mercy. Loving God, you call us to serve our neighbors. Bless our vacations as we, vocations as we, we, we serve you faithfully. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who are in need of any type of healing and health. Today we lift up to you Carl and Willis, Marie, Barry, Janelle, Jax, Jean, Art, Cindy, and Ben. Lord, in your mercy. With thanksgiving, we remember the clouds of witnesses, those who inspire us to loving service. Lord, in your mercy. Into your wide embracing arms, gracious God, we come all for who we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Please share that peace with one another.
Let us pray. Please stand. Let us pray. Gracious God, you bless us with these gifts of guidance, new life, growth, and grace, and fruitful labor. Accept the first fruits of time and toil, field and orchard we offer here. Bless and multiply these gifts to our nurture and care for your creation. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up our hearts, your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through your Son, Jesus Christ. You sent your Son to reveal your never-failing love for creation. Through your Holy Spirit, you provide for our nurture and protection that we might have all things necessary for growth in grace and humble service to your people. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their adoring song. Long, long ago in Jerusalem, as the scriptures do record, Isaiah to the temple came to see the Holy Lord. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, God's glory fills the heaven and earth, God of At the mighty Lord robes flowing through the hall While six winged angels flew above Isaiah heard them call Holy, holy, holy Lord God of power and might God's glory is the whole and earth God of power and might Oh, what a sight it was was to see and know oh, what a sound to hear the temple doorpost shook and quaked and smoke was in the air holy 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 lord god of power and might the hell is a home and earth god of power and In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks. He broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Please be seated. Somebody of Christ given for you. 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 the blood of Christ shed for you. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. It's the blood of Christ shed for you. It's the blood of Christ shed for you.
about a Christ given for you. It's 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 about a Christ given for you. like to invite you to hold hands and receive the blessing. May may these gifts of God bless you now and forever. Go in peace. Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. I would invite you to hold hands and receive the blessing. May these gifts of God bless you this day and forevermore. Go in peace. given for you. There's a communion. The Lord bless you and keep in his grace always. The Lord bless you and keep in his grace always. The body of Christ given for you. The Lord bless you and keep in his grace always. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. invite you to hold hands and receive a blessing. May the blessings of Almighty God strengthen you this day and forevermore. In peace. given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of the body of Christ given for you. It's the body of Christ given for you. I'd like to invite you to hold hands and receive the blessing. May God Almighty bless you this day with these gifts, now and forever. Go in peace.
Body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. invite you to join hands and receive the blessing. May the Almighty God bless you with these gifts now and forever. Go in peace. you to join and may the may may the blessings of almighty god be upon you this day and forevermore go in peace Christ given for you, body of Christ given for you. Let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your pruning, planting, and nurture. We rejoice that you have used the harvest of the field and vineyard to renew and sustain us. Lead us as we go from this life-giving meal into lives of grateful service to you and your cherished creation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. For those who are able, please stand and receive the blessing. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grants you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of all grace bless you now and forever. is 
my father's world. Go in peace, the Spirit sends us forth to serve.